Cody, you've got a national championship game on Sunday. The alma yeah, mater. We do. Two Montana against one South Dakota State. Montana 13 and one, the big sky champs versus the mountain, excuse me, the Missouri Valley Conference champs being South Dakota State. And those who are not familiar with the FCS, your big sky is like your Big Ten, and your Missouri Valley is like your SEC. Yep. South Dakota State's like your Georgia, the up and coming monster, 28 game winning streak. The last time they lost, September 3rd, 2022 at Iowa. Look at the score of this game, 7-3. to three. If that doesn't scream oh. Iowa, I don't know what does. Um, they're the defending national champions. Montana seeking their first title since 2001. They've got two titles already. And uh, this is the first time they've been in the national championship conversation. They're kind of known as one of the, you know, the, the, the programs, the prominent dynasties, I guess you would say, of the FCS. I would honestly compare them to Michigan. Because Michigan kind of like, don't look at them as like the winningest program in FBS history. Don't look at them as Montana that way. But Montana is the type that are always in the conversation. And then something like happens. Like they're always, always in a fight. You always can't, when you mention the national championship or you mention the FCS football, you always got to mention the Montana Grizzlies because they're in it. And everyone wants to play Montana. Everyone wants to beat Montana. Just kind of how everyone wants to beat Michigan. Everyone wants to see Michigan down. Michigan versus everybody. It's Montana versus everybody. They had a terrible loss early in the season in NAU. To, for them to flip it around like this is unbelievable. Um, so many storylines. You look at two historic brands. Um, but again, it, it, it's cool. Not only alma mater, duh, like you look at all the Montana stuff in the background, but to possibly be one of the building blocks and maybe even be a voice in their success. So, you know, even though my role wasn't as big as I wanted it to be, I think it's something special. And to have a bunch of guys, especially that senior class, six year seniors. And we were talking before how I remember in 2018, we had a meeting with our strength coach said, oh, yeah, this is going to be the fastest four years of your life. You know, not everyone in this room is going to be there from when it's done. Then COVID happens and then red shirt years happen, gray shirts, so on and so forth. They've been there for six years, the longest six years ever. So, again, finally, their last their last year. Um, but I want to throw it to you, Cody. I'm going to dive into Montana, dive into South Dakota State. But what sticks out to you when you look at this one? Again, two historic brands. Um, South Dakota State, heavy favorite right now, 13 and a half point favorite. It's going to be played at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas, seats 21,000. It's a great venue they have every year. But um, what sticks out to you when you look at this one, either South Dakota State or Montana? I think that one, one of the things that sticks out to me the most is how old both of these two teams are, similar to what you were just talking about. Six year seniors on both sides. Isaiah Davis, been at South Dakota State, what seems like for forever. Mark Ranowski, um, by the way, Isaiah Davis, running back from South Dakota State. Uh, Mark Granowski, oh, absolute baller. Um, All-American, by the way. Mark dude, Granowski. I remember him. Sorry to interrupt. I remember him as a freshman, dude. He played in the 2021 National Championship. They lost to Sam, Sam Houston State. As a freshman, 182 yards, three touchdowns. Last year at 102 yards, one touchdown. It's his third National Championship, and he's finally a senior. Sorry to interrupt, but this guy is phenomenal. He's good running back, 1,500 yards this year. Baller, baller. First team All-American. There, Mark Gronowski, quarterback, um, one of the three finalists for the Walter Payton Award, which for those who don't really follow FCS football, that's kind of the Heisman Trophy of FCS. Um, Mark Gronowski kind of being talked about as maybe undrafted free agent, late round pick for the NFL. Um, if you look at South Dakota State, their offensive line is just a bunch of maulers. I think they had two maybe even three offensive linemen that were first-team All-Americans as well. On the defensive side of the ball, obviously, they fly around. Um, I saw a stat that said that only two teams, Montana State, and then I think um, South Dakota. I'll have to double-check that. But only two teams kept it within one score. Um, And not to mention, uh, they beat Albany in the semifinals fifth. D9 to nothing. So this Sandy, South Dakota State is an absolute juggernaut um, out there from the plains. Um, Montana is going to have a very, very balanced breakfast to play against mm. there um, in those South Dakota State Jackrabbits. And it's kind of unique, too. I mean, two years later, after Montana beats Washington at Washington, a ranked Washington team, both Washington and Montana are playing in the national championship the same weekend two years later. Kind of crazy to see how that turns around. Washington fans, you're welcome. Montana, Kalen DeBoer, <laughs> Michael Penix, you're welcome for all of that. But 
First, I'll start with South Dakota State. <laughs> Why? <What? laughs> I mean, it's just, of course that happened. Of course. Of course Isn't that happened. crazy, though? I mean, That's we beat them two so years ago. Wild. That's wild. Dude, one of the craziest memories, bro. I have a shout out, I don't, shout out Sam Heward. I think I might have the football in the background there. So, yeah, shout out, shout out Sam Heward. He's now at Cal yeah, Poly. Yeah, I saw that he's, he was ranked. He was ranked above like Carson Beck, Caleb Williams, Sam some other Heward. Dudes. Some recruiting services was the number one player in the country. Wild. That's a discussion no for comment. another day. Yeah, no, no comment. comment. Um, let's start South Dakota State. My biggest key to South Dakota State, don't kick the ball to Junior Bergen. Do, Do not, not kick the ball. I remember you texting me. You watched the Montana game. Like Again, I've watched every Montana game. It's my alma mater. You watched some, and you're like, dude, this Junior Bergen guy is f- phenomenal. Three total return touchdowns in the last two games. One kickoff return, two punt returns. Don't Bro. kick it to him. And, and I know <laughs> South Dakota State's like, oh, you know, we're the, we're the big dogs. Like, we can tackle this little guy. We got this little guy. Over 1,600 yards, all-purpose yards. This guy's phenomenal. Do not kick it to Mr. Junior Bergen, first and foremost. Second, I think they got to stuff the run early. Montana, the past two games, has struggled with the run. Jerry Rice Award winner, Eli Gilman, freshman of the year. Last two games, thirty sorry, last three games in the playoffs, 35 carries, only 93 yards, two touchdowns in three games. They got to be able to get him early on the other side for Montana. If you're a South Dakota State, you stuff him early. It caused panic. And, I, and, and to my next point, I think you've got to, you know, apply interior pressure pass rush to Clifton McDowell, the quarterback from Montana. He's a junior. He's a Texas boy going back to Texas. The only thing about Clifton McDowell that is tough, he's 52.8% passing, not very accurate with the football. Most of that is when interior pressure comes his way, he tends to just back up and kind of throw with his feet sideways like this. That's not really good as a quarterback. If they can apply interior pass rush, and he always tries to avoid stuff, going left, going right, and ends up being a 15-yard loss. So if you're South Dakota State, they pride themselves on their defensive line. Interior pass rush is something to look out for. And lastly, Cody, I said it against North Dakota State, and it's the biggest worry I have of this defense. If you're South Dakota State and there's zero blitz, look for those one-on-one matchups against those safeties. Besides cool. Nash Fouch, who who's one of my boys, they're going to have to find a way to cover the 6'7", 260-pound tight end from South Dakota State. Last week, or last time they played against Albany, four catches, 50 yards, two touchdowns, especially in the red zone. I think he's got to be a guy, Nash Fouch, who's more athletic. He's 6'2", 206, 207. Um, He's played in every game since 2019. Deep safety. He's probably their best cover safety. He's got to be a guy on him. But if you got other guys, like, I mean, I'm not going to mention names, but the other safety groups on those one-on-one situations, especially with the wide receivers, South Dakota State. You talk about Isaiah Davis has been there forever. The Janky brothers, the twin brothers. I've been there forever, six, forever. seven, eight years. Like they're the Hunter Renfro's of FCS football. If they're in the yeah. slots, if you're you're Gronkowski and Montana likes to bring that zero blitz, bring that pressure, get the ball out early, and win those one on one matchups in the slot. That's what worries me about South Dakota State. Um, any other thing you got about South Dakota State that stands out to you um, when you look at this team? I mean, this team's really good. This team's really balanced. Yeah, I think I think it's just. The biggest thing for me is can South Dakota State complete the dynasty, right? It's one like I think all the pressure is on them. They're supposed to win. They won their semifinal fifty nine to nothing. Um, this is kind of I don't want to say David versus Goliath because very similar. Like Montana is like you said, kind of like the Michigan of the FCS. Like they're always kind of in the conversation. Are they national championship caliber? Do they make it to the semifinal? Do they make it to the national championship? Uh, do mm-hmm. they maybe get tripped up? during the regular season by an NAU or maybe a Montana state or an Eastern Washington. Um, but again, they play in such a tough conference that it kind of makes sense that they kind of get battle tested and they kind of make a run um, either them or a Montana state or an Eastern kind of make a run um, through the, through the uh, FCS playoffs um, seemingly every year. So um, I think really is Montana, you're going to have to play damn near a perfect football game. And if they're able to force a South Dakota State turnover, block a punt, uh, fake mm. a punt. Um, you know what I mean? Do like trick plays. Um, find a way to maybe get Junior Bergen on the edge and then on a fly sweep, and then throw it back to our boy Keelan White. You know, like it is what it is. Like those, are, like Montana, you are playing with house money. You're not supposed to win. Um, I don't know what the line is, but I'm assuming it's probably double digits. No disrespect. Thirteen and a half. Right. So, um, 
throw Carson to the wind, man. Blo- go after a punt, fake a punt, fake a field goal, throw some trick plays, empty the bag, man. You guys, you're playing with house money. That's one thing about Brent Pease, the offensive coordinator, who's my receiver coach. It's funny about Bobby Halk. They're not afraid to have those trick plays, especially in the special teams, like you mentioned. A lot of two-point conversion history where they do go for two in, in a different formation out of the field goal, or they'll, they'll fake a punt, like you mentioned, or they'll run trick plays. I think their last three games, they've had some kind of trick play. Um, so look out for that if you're South Dakota State, but don't look out for that if you're South Dakota State because we want to kind, kind of catch you off guard. But <laughs> Montana keys uh, Montana keys to the game. Um, again, I, I'm going to live, breathe, and die by this. Montana has the best wide receiver core in the nation, and I think they're being disrespected. Mm. I think something, too, that they play advantage of was to do a great job over there in Montana. And these are guys that have played together, a lot of snaps together, is scramble drill. I think they could take advantage of it. I was watching some South Dakota State. I think they do a really bad job when it comes to scramble drill and locating wide receivers in certain zones or, you know, if it's man coverage, like kind of, you know, getting lost and either – when, when, a, when a dual threat quarterback like Clifton McDowell is a threat to run, maybe they forget where the wide receiver is, throw it over the top, but they call themselves the Waffle House because they're always open. Always open. Oh. Always open. Fire. I think they're the best in the FCS, and, and I think one of those guys, which, again, this is my X factor, we know him, junior wide receiver Keelan White. This guy's been balling all playoffs to see where he was at. He was a walk-on out of Canada, earned a scholarship, and then made his way up to where he's at right now. But in the playoffs, people talk about Junior Bergen and deservingly so. But the hottest wide receiver and the go-to wide receiver, if it's third down, fourth down, crucial moment, you go to Keelan White. 12 catches, 219 yards, two touchdowns in three playoff games. I think he's the hottest wide receiver. I think this is a guy that you got to get going early. He can take you off the top. He's a good route runner. He's got great hands. Kind of that spidey senses, sticky hands that he's got. He kind of plays in that M.O. of Spider-Man. This is a guy that they got to get going. Clifton McDowell, they've got him. They've got the speedy guy in Aaron Fonts, and they also got Junior Berg. And those are some guys, best wide receiver core. And I've seen articles that have ranked the wide receivers. And they got South Dakota State's wide receivers over these guys. I think it's disrespectful. Highest stage, ABC, show out Keelan White's my X factor from that standpoint. On the other side of things, comments saying that Cam Miller from North Dakota State was the most efficient quarterback in the FCS. And then look what happened against Montana. 9 of 22, 157 yards, one touchdown. We said it in that episode, Montana, North Dakota State caused havoc. The same to South Dakota State. Yes, you did say that. You did say that, Mr. Cody Oaks. I'm just saying. Anyway, continue. (laughs) Continue. Continue. But I I think they've got to create, you know, just kind of like how Michigan did against Alabama, create chaos. Um, You know, South Dakota State's quarterback, like you mentioned, he's very accurate downfield. They can somehow kind of – I looked at the Villanova tape because that was probably their, their closest game. I think they only won by like 10, 11 points against a really bad Villanova, eight-seed Villanova team. Uh, Gronowski was 11 of 19, 57.9%, and only 109 yards. So I think if you can make him frustrated with those blitzes like we saw with Cam Miller, missing wide-open guys because he's getting pressure, not even the sack side of thing, but to cause pressure and collapse the pocket, I think plays advantage – for Montana. Um, the second one, you're not going to be able to stop Isaiah Davis. This guy's the best running back. Again, Montana is one of the best rushing defense, but this guy, they, they, they give him about 30, 40 carries a game. You can hold him under 110 yards. I think that's a big advantage. Um, another point, I got a ton of points here. Sorry for hogging the segment here, Cody. You're good. Um, but it's your alma mater in the natty. <laughs> second down offense that I mentioned against North Dakota State, and they didn't really do well on this still. I think it's going to be pivotal against South Dakota State, and I'll throw it to you, Cody. Eight of 15 third downs last week, just like it was against, I think, who they played the Furman before, were eight to 10 yards, long third downs. And I think third downs, long third downs, Clifton McDowell doesn't do best on him. I think he kind of panics from that standpoint. But talk to me as a quarterback and a play caller, like what, what is going through your mind when most of your third downs, I guess, are that eight to 10 yard range, especially with a quarterback like McDowell, maybe not the most accurate. You've got good wide receivers on the outside. They're expecting the throw. Like what kind of play calls, I guess, when you're running games struggling, hopefully it doesn't struggle against South Dakota state, but we've seen the past couple of games that has struggled early. Like take me through as an offensive minded guy when, it, when, when you're getting those third downs, eight to 10 and how pivotal that second down is to kind of play for that third down. Yeah. you know. Th- the third the third down and eight or more, I think that's one of those things that like your playbook just gets shrunk shrunk. If we're actually trying to get it as opposed to like play field position, hand the ball off to the running back and punt. Like if we're actually trying to get it, your playbook is kind of shrunk, right? There's not too many plays that are designed to get 
10 yards, 12 yards. So as a defense, that lets me know, okay, if I bring pressure and this ball gets out and he throws a five-yard slant and it's third and eight, as long as we rally and tackle, we'll be fine. And so I think, like, like similar to what you were talking about, you know, that second down is pivotal. Like, if you mm-hmm. can get it to second or third and four, third and three, the playbook kind of opens up. Can you run the ball? Can you maybe throw a little rollout? Can you throw a screen? Can you, like, there's just so many different things that you can do when it's third and four less as opposed to third and, or third and seven, eight, nine, maybe even 10 yards. Um, so if they're able to keep that kind of down, keep that yardage on third down lower than I'd say five. Mm. If, if we're averaging third and four, third and three, third and two, um, I think Montana is going to be in an okay spot especially in the national championship game, like the nerves are going to be flowing. You got a freshman running back. You've got a first start of a quarterback, like no one on this roster has played at a national championship game. Be able to get those quick passes going. Like you mentioned with Michael Penix, be able to get Gilman going in the running game early. I think it's my other point, but another thing to look out for Montana, they got to be efficient in the third quarter, every third quarter, they always lay a dud. And then you see a junior Bergen return for a touchdown. They've got to be able to be efficient in the third quarter. And then lastly, if they keep it within a one score in the fourth quarter, this Montana team performs well in the fourth quarter. They've got to keep it within one score. I think if you get it to two scores and they start to run away with it early and you kind of try to catch from behind and they, they go to that running game, like we talked about Michigan resulting in the running game, running the clock in, in the second half, it's going to be tough for that defense to stop them. Um, again, self-inflicted wounds. My last point here, the, my X factor on the defensive side of the ball, sophomore outside linebacker Riley Wilson. He's from Texas, coming back home. Eight and a half sacks this season, 48 tackles. He's got to be a guy to apply pressure on Gronowski and, and cause havoc. If they're pissed at themselves, and you can cause self-inflicted penalties. Huge advantage for Montana. Maybe that third and 10 is third and 15. Maybe that third and five is third and 10. Maybe that second and 15, second and 20. I don't know, whatever happens. But Montana, if you can make them frustrated and not look at them as like, oh, we're playing South Dakota State. Oh, we're in the FCS National Championship. We'll just treat them like every other opponent. I think they've got a good shot. I think them beating North Dakota State last week was definitely, you know, now they're like, okay, we can beat anybody. Oh, South Dakota State, yeah, well, whatever. Because if you look at them as a big brand, in my opinion, I think that's when you start to get, you know, you know, things not going the right way for you from Montana in that standpoint. God, I, yeah, I, I think, a lot. Um, <laughs> no, you're good. This, like I said, this is your alma mater in the natty. Like, this is one of those, like, things that, you know, it's very rare that, I mean, I think, you know, like if you look at it the last 10 to 15 years in the FBS, it's very pretty much it's like Alabama, Clemson, and, you know, Ohio State for the most part. Those are the three schools mm. that kind of people can look at. And then every once in a while you add in like one or two teams in there, like Clemson at the beginning, right? So now, like, the fact that your school that you just recently were at is in the national championship, I get that. Um at the end of the day, I think you're right. I think Junior Bergen, if he gets a chance to get the, his hands on the football um, in space, watch out, especially on a return of some sort. Because normally, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of special teams is not your starters. So that means that it's not your best tacklers. It's not your best blockers. It's not your best, like, cover guys. So that allows Junior Bergen, who is a starter on offense, to kind of work against a second tier of tacklers. And I think that one of the things that, he's so dynamic in the open spaces he's able to avoid tackles and make people miss and i think um if he's able to do that and get his hands on a football and like a punt return or a kick return um i think that i mean if they the more the more chances he gets the better chance it is that he's going to take something to the house and so um i think south dakota state is best served kicking that ball out of bounds although south dakota state kick it in bounds man we want to see that (laughs) <laughs> we want to see that yeah and i advise people who are watching this game just look at the stories that they bring up about a bunch of these kids we mentioned keelan white i could go on and on for hours about every single player on this team most of these guys have got relationships with but great stories from montana they recruit more montana south dakota state they recruit more south dakota state so you're seeing two states of football that don't really get talked about much um at a national level beyond the abc so i think that's pretty cool there but um any other guys any other keys anything else you want to say about this matchup we'll get into our picks here cody yeah i mean montana you cannot snooze in the third quarter man you cannot snooze Mm. if it is a close game at halftime and you come out and you give up 14 points to the jack rabbits you will lose this football game so um all i know is is that montana if you guys again steal a possession block a punt force a fumble maybe surprise onside kick after a score 
or something like that. Just find ways to put game pressure on South Dakota State because they haven't really felt any. And I think that if you're able to get a team that is not used to game pressure in a close game late, which feels like all of Montana's games have come down to the last play of the game or overtime. Last two or, overtime, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like every Montana game is just must-see TV. And I think that that bodes well when you get into a game like this where you're supposed to lose, but you're able to put game pressure on someone who has been rolling through the playoffs. I'll start out with predictions. Again, I got to go Montana, dude. There's no way I can go South Dakota State. Keep proving people wrong. The Cinderella story of the FCS season. I got Montana win. I got him winning 25-24. Um, how do I want to say this? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say they get a touchdown late and they go for two. And don't get I'm it. I'm gonna say I'll say Keelan White gets the game winning touchdown. Wow. Keelan White gets the game winning hey, touchdown. Yeah, they go yeah. for two. They go for two and they were all they run like a draw or delayed run. Eli Gilman gets the run. Great stadium goes crazy. Hopefully Grizz Nation. I know Grizz Nation shows out. And I know Grizz Nation, again, Arizona Wildcats and Montana Grizzlies, when it comes to our videos, they show out. I appreciate Grizz Nation always. But I got them winning, man, 25-24 sorry, twenty-five twenty-four Montana. 25-24 Montana. Great pick. I'm not going to be Grizz mad, fans. bro. I'm not going to be fans. mad. Don't hate me, please. I know you guys watch us. Please don't unsubscribe from me. Don't disrespect me. I'm not disrespecting you guys by this pick. I just have to win the pickoff. I just have to win the pickoff. I'm going to go 30, 35, 24. I think it's going to be a 28, 24 game late. Damn. I think I'm it's going to be. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think it's going to be 28, 24. And then unfortunately, um, Montana's quarterback throws an interception that gets returned for a touchdown with like 30 seconds left and San Diego or South Dakota state celebrates back to back national championships. 